So the big question that I want to raise tonight, are women key to 2024, the woman vote? Do women welfare schemes impact elections? Are these freebies or are this resulting in genuine women empowerment? If so, why is women representation in politics still so low? Just some of the questions I'm going to raise tonight. The woman voter under sharp focus. Professor Sanjay Kumar is co Dr. Sanjay Kumar is co-director, Lokniti CSDS, psychologist, is joining us. He'll tell us what impact it has on elections. Tara Krishna Swami is co-founder, Citizens for Bengaluru and Political Shakti. Sanjay Jha is here as a former congressman and political analyst. Gaurav Bhatia is here as BJP spokesperson. I appreciate all of you joining us here on the show today. Sanjay Jha, I want to ask you this right away. Is the Congress now, according to you, with these grand schemes, trying to say that the woman voter is the one that we are targeting? Rahul Gandhi is saying all our schemes are directed at women. Now, you've been in power for so many years. Suddenly, it seems that every party, including the Congress, has woken up to the reality of the power of 49. Uh, Rajdeep, a very relevant question, but let me tell you if there's one political party in India that has brought about the most landmark, I consider it a watershed progressive legislation for women's empowerment, you'll have to give the full credit to the Congress party. I'm referring to the Panchati Raj, where you have a minimum 33% reservation for women in those elections. And I think that's how you do the bottom up you know, revolutionary social change in our country. I, I really feel, uh, Rajdeep, that you are absolutely right that today, if you look at the percentage, there are only 10 percent, I think 14 percent women in parliament uh, in terms of the overall number of parliamentarians. And in terms of people contesting elections, even that is at a very lowly 10 percent. But here is the point. I really don't think that when you look at Indian society, let's be honest about that, that we still are a patriarchal society. It still is a society that brazenly practices misogyny. I'll give you a couple of examples. You have in Delhi, women champion wrestlers of India, Razdeep. They bring us glory. You and I are both sports lovers. They win us championships, medals in the most competitive global sports, not like cricket, which is played between 10 countries. And look at what we do to them. When they are asking for justice on a case of sexual harassment, just because it happens to be a BJP member of parliament, Narendra Modi goes on a silent mode. And today you're going to have the ignominy of India being represented without the national anthem being played, without actually India being named as a country, simply because the Bharatiya Janata Party wants to save a sexual predator. I mean, is this the kind of empowerment we want to really give women? My second point, equally important, Bilkis Banu. I mean, I can understand totally that, you know, every rape case in this country, whoever it is, or from wherever, whichever caste of religions is, is horrendous. But Bilkis Banu's case, where a rapist are released and the cases in the Supreme Court, I would like to ask the BJP spokesperson today, I mean, aren't you morally guilty of being so cold and callous for a woman who went through the most traumatic experience of her life. I mean, there are numerous examples of this kind of... Sanjay Jha, Sanjay like Jha, like this have, I have four guests and they must get equal time. You made your point. Okay. Gaurav Bhatia, respond to what you're hearing. You know, we heard the, the government spokesperson yesterday say that this is a Rakhi gift, LPG prices being slashed by, two, by 200 rupees. There will be those men in kitchens who also say, Hama, liye bhi kuch karwa do. but the truth is, all political parties are now wooing women. Free bus rides for women. Uh, your chief minister in Madhya Pradesh has his Ladli Bhena scheme directed at providing 1250 rupees to every woman head of a family. Now we've got in Karnataka, Congress is giving 2000 rupees. It seems at the moment that all parties, you would agree, are targeting women as their voters. Isn't that right? Would I be right in saying that, that you have discovered the woman voter? Rajdeep, sare mard aap ki tarah nahi sochte hain. You might feel that uh, women are voters. As a visionary Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji sees, he sees all the women as tools of empowering India, mm -hmm. as a person who is contributing to the growth of the nation. And I will come to what Sanjay Jha said and respond. 
with facts but most importantly let me tell you how india has changed yesterday when this announcement was made it was welcomed by all women because it was a gift from their brother who thinks about them and 200 rupees were reduced of every lpg cylinder the reason is very simple that narendra modi ji is one leader who ensures that there is fiscal discipline as well mm -hmm. you know it's not like those old upa days where corruption was writ large where there was no fiscal discipline mm -hmm. and we all know how the current account deficit was more than 5 5 and 1/2% inflation double digit mm -hmm. now everything is under control but it is historic because the country has president as a woman dropadi murmu ji don't forget congress said rashtrapatni adhir ranjan choudhary showing how much they respect a woman president mm -hmm. second finance minister is a woman again we must remember how more than 10.35 crore ujjwala gas connections have been given to the women of the country therefore ensuring that they are empowered we must remember 4 crore pakka houses given to women registry done under their name that shows that now they have a house under their own name we must remember dignity of a woman kept in mind when 11.25 crore toilets have been constructed under the swachh bharat yojana what does it do a lady had to step out from the comfort of her house and go and defecate in open field imagine the plight of the women the congress party could not think of them narendra modi ji did we must also remember that now women are joining the army navy and air force as fully commissioned officers mm -hmm. that this had never happened before now let me respond to what the congress was saying please don't see this as a political gimmick or women as voters and therefore we are doing it i think there is a vision the vision is that india has to become a developed nation and for that it is important that 50% of the workforce is also empowered i must say that when sanjay jha talks about landmark legislation he should tell the nation the difference between modi ji and the congress party is shaira bano and shah bano shaira bano ensured triple talaq became unconstitutional later made a criminal offense by narendra modi ji and you know what happened in shah bano a 60 year old woman she got her maintenance from the supreme court rajiv gandhi indulging in appeasement politics reversed that verdict because she we the lady was getting some stipend and maintenance is that empowerment second he should be talking about rajasthan 6337 incidents of rape in rajasthan every year ashok gelot says mardon ka pradesh hai uska mantri keh raha hai rajdeep divya madena the mla what is she saying main khud safe nahi hu baaki kaise safe hoge so there is an issue your your of time also is up gora bhatia you made a They compelling you made an argument means empowering Mis sonia gandhi and priyanka wadra gandhi okay you believe that there for them empowerment is empowering the gandhis quick response uh, uh, sanjay jhan then i'll go to tara krishnamurthy go ahead rajiv a quick response mm -hmm. history has shown this that all parties which have a streak of fascism mm -hmm. are patriarchal inherently let me give you a couple of examples mm -hmm. the guru of the bjp is the rss we all know that we all know what mohan bhagwat feels about women his fam famous comment that the women are best when they are housewives this is the mindset the spiritual guru of the bjp number 2 manipur mm -hmm. do we need to talk again and again of the horrific gang rape and narendra modi goes into radio silence for 78 days and then speaks for 36 seconds this is the respect you have for women point number 3 very important i need to point out labor participation rate let's skip the rhetoric for the moment the number of women in the workforce is dropping women are actually now saying we are not even looking for jobs because there are no jobs for them and actually empowerment starts with economic ind independence and the fourth data point that mm. my dear friend mr gorab bhatia cannot really refute on the gender equality index rajdeep india today ranks 135 on 146 this is the same davos when mr modi goes and pontificates 
and that's where Davos is rated okay, India on gender parity. You, you, both of you have made your points. I want to get some. Can I respond? No, no, worry. I, I will let you respond. Just hold no, on. No, I have not made. No, no, you, you must hold on. Gaurav extend Bhatia. me the same courtesy, Radhi. I will extend you the courtesy. Don't worry. I just don't worry about Be that. Fair. I will make sure you'll have enough time. Tara Krishna Swami, you're hearing. No, I'm not worried. I think you are worried. No, no. Why you're hearing. Worried? You're hearing the voices you. of the BJP so and the Congress. As someone who has been calling for greater political representation, it's today you have got the BJP saying we are giving Rakhi gifts. The Congress saying look what we are doing with Griha Lakshmi. We are giving two thousand rupees to the woman health head of a family in Karnataka. Is the reality though that women are still very poorly represented? I'm putting out some of the numbers of how many women actually are there in our parliament and in our assemblies. In Karnataka, it's less than 10%. In the Lok Sabha, it's 15%. Is that the real issue? We need more women in public life rather than simply giving 1,500 and 2,000 rupees. Rajdeep, I don't think these can be uh, analyzed, uh, you know, in a in a in a sort of a, by clumping them all together and sort of rendering a generic verdict on them. I think different schemes address different things. If you look at the trajectory of uh, the political uh, role of women in India, it started with uh, at, at independence and the first elections. It started with the assumption that you enroll a family you're enrolling the woman. You, they really didn't go out and enroll women. Women didn't necessarily, there's a large and there's enough documentation uh, to show that, you know, there's huge numbers of women missing from the first electoral rolls. Mm -hmm. They only approached the family. After that, both the election commission and political parties in particular did a lot of work to enlist women, looking at women as voters, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Then it went to looking at women as a vote bank, which is when you start looking at schemes. What is the difference? You're not just looking at women as a part of a family. If you enroll the husband, you enroll the woman, or you enroll the father, you enroll the woman. Two, treating women as individual voters and enrolling them. Two, saying, look, women as a collective have differential uh, roles in society, have differential needs, and have differential aspirations too, while there are also common aspirations, and we will cater to them. Now, within that are these schemes. And some of these schemes are genuinely empowering. For example, for a long time, in uh, in fact, let's go to end, uh, let's go to N.T. Ramarao in, in uh, Andhra Pradesh in 1987-88, when he brought in the inheritance scheme for Hindu women. And, uh, you know, the national parliament only passed it well after uh, 2000, after 2010, I believe. So uh, that is... No, do you, support, two th no, do you support 2,000 rupees being given to the woman head, head of a family? That's what I'm saying. So there are poverty alleviation schemes like 2000 rupees being given to women head of families that provided that they are at a certain poverty level. This is not that I'm eligible for it and I shouldn't be right. At the same time, you may give uh, a scheme for the marriage of a woman. Right. So in one case, it's a poverty alleviation scheme. In the second case, the example of NTR that I gave, or the example of uh, no, what know, about Mr. Uh, Modi's uh, schemes? schemes? No, what about, one, one what about Mr. Modi schemes? Whether yeah, they are Ujwala, whether there. there are Swachh Bharat, they are also impacting women. I, I, I'm coming there. I'm coming there. So if you look at the Dravidian schemes, and if you look at the connection to education and saying 10th pass, 12th pass, college enrollment, then it's genuinely empowering because the woman sort of gets emancipated. It is not just poverty alleviation; it's emancipation. You're moving higher up in the Maslow's pyramid. The 2,000 rupees alleviates poverty. It allows her on nutritional levels to go up. It allows her to escape domestic, domestic violence. So that's at a certain level of, uh, uh, mm -hmm. you know, social uh, relevance. And then the next level of relevance is education and employment related loans for women entrepreneurs and so forth. And then uh, if you look at things like Ujwala or Swachh Bharat, they're absolutely necessary, but they're at a very, very basic level, right? There is no question of empowerment there. It's a basic need that you're fulfilling. You okay. certainly cannot so, call it empowerment, but there is a need. That so you're concerned. saying there's a basket of schemes and we could include even some of the schemes that Mamta Banerjee has given. Schemes like Kanya Shri to girl child. If they pass a certain level, the family gets a certain amount of money. The truth on the other end, uh, Professor Sanjay Kumar, is I'm going to put out numbers that show A, women are voting more and more in elections and women are making clear choices. I went through a list of all elections in recent time. No party which has got more women votes has lost. Mamta Banerjee defeated the BJP in 2021 because she got more women votes. Narendra Modi has defeated his rivals in general election. Women have voted in even larger numbers than men for him. Is there now a clear woman vote bank out there which can be wooed whether you give bicycles to girls, 2,000 rupees or create special schemes for them? 
राजदीप आई थिंक येस वीमेन इज इमर्जिंग एज अ यू नो वोट बैंक वीमेन एज अ ग्रुप इज इमर्जिंग एज अ वोट बैंक एंड पोलिटिकल पार्टीज हैव रियलाइज बिकॉज इफ यू लुक एट द टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन लोकसभा इलेक्शन यू डेट यू हैव पुट आउट सम डेटा ऑन द स्क्रीन बट जस्ट टू रिट्रिएट द डेटा दैट इफ यू लुक एट ऑल द स्टेट्स एंड ऑल द यूनियन टेरिटरीज आउट ऑफ द थर्टी सिक्स states and union territories there are 24 states and union territories where women have women voters have outnumbered men and there are large number of states where women have outnumbered men in terms of voting by a very large margin 5 or 6% is a huge margin to name some of the states say himachal arunachal uh, bihar uh, these are some of the states where women have outnumbered men in a very large number so the whole point is that why these political parties are doling out you know we may call it freebies we may call it uh, welfare schemes aimed at women because they have realized you have already mentioned that you know you have looked at the data and you have realized that in all the states which went to poll during last few years whichever party women have sided with they have hardly lost an election this is an evidence and these are the evidence which is coming out from the research which we are also doing but what attracts them what attracts the women voter the party which they what attracts them is it schemes is it welfare schemes for them is oh, it cash think, handouts what oh, attracts them no rajdeep there's oh, analysis one, one minute please a mix me. of all these can yeah, go ahead a mix of all these welfare schemes is one is one aspect uh, freebies is one aspect giving you know direct cash is one aspect but also rajdeep i would like to cite one uh, in uh, one evidence from the research which we have done if we look at the proportion of women who were taking their independent voting decision and that is related to why we see women turning out to vote in such a large number if i look at the 2004 or 2009 lok sabha election roughly 25 27% women mentioned in the survey that they have voted on their own they were did they did not take an advice from any other family right. member or friends but if i look at the data for 2019 Uh, it is it has touched almost 50% 47 48% women in the survey mentioned that they are taking their own voting decision they are not being guided by other members i think that's the catalyst that has encouraged women to turn out to vote in much bigger number and that is also one factor that right. they are taking carefully informed choices decision which party they want to vote for and i think so media has or social media has is a big has a big role to play in that okay let me bring in gaurav bhatia again because he was getting rajdeep if i could just say one thing about yeah very quickly vote. tara yes yeah so in our work with the women's vote women vote based on delivered promises not just based on the manifesto if you deliver law and order in a bihar if you deliver to the schemes whether it is ujwala whether it is the 2000 rupees per month whether it is the schemes that the dravidian parties may deliver mm-hmm. whether it is the schemes in rajasthan or in bihar that nitish kumar delivers when there is a track record of delivery post delivery after the so it's a reward after. it's a reward for you having delivered if you deliver That's right. you will be rewarded by the woman That's but gaurav right. bhatia you want you are very uh, anxious to respond to sanjay jha who is saying that the bjp is practicing double standards his argument and i think sanjay jha can correct me whether it's the bridge bhushan saran singh case where the general belief is the government hasn't done enough to in a way isolate bridge bhushan saran singh that's the, right the 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 belief is the bjp doesn't walk the talk when it comes to beti bachao beti padhao okay so i gave certain numbers and let me again highlight because there are so many achievements to be highlighted i would give a few numbers no no respond to sanjay jha first you know we were talking about empowerment i i will wait wait i will respond in the way i want to respond now uh, radhi please so uh, maternity leave before modi ji became the prime minister was extended for t- uh, 12 weeks to a lady who was expecting a baby now it's 26 weeks i think this is empowerment 9.72 crore homes have water Rastu. coming through tap connections isn't it uh, something that uh, should be at least respected mm-hmm. that uh, women had to walk for 6 km 7 km to fetch water now they have it in the tap coming at their household we must remember how modi ji has ensured that criminal law becomes more stringent and if a minor is raped and if there is the minor doesn't survive the victim 
there would be death sentence. Why am I citing this? I am citing this because Dogla Pan kya hota hai, double standard kya hota hai, mein aapko batata hu. I asked about Rajasthan. Rajasthan ke mantri ne kaha, mardo ka pradesh hai. Ashok Gelot ne kaha, chota re, bada re. Chhattisgarh ke minister ne kaha, Rajiv, should it not be asked to Rahul Gandhi and Sonia Gandhi, if you are so concerned about women empowerment and their dignity, mm -hmm. why is it that you don't speak on Rajasthan, the victims in Rajasthan, and on Manipur? Narendra Modi ji spoke on the floor of the house, but did the opposition Congress wait there to listen to the response? Rajdeep, the answer is a categorical no. Sir, so let me say I on Manipur, say, I'm on Manipur is, certainly, sir, it did not require a viral Tarat. video for the Prime Minister. And, you know, it required a viral video for this national conscience to wake Radeep, up. I think... Uh, so I don't think you, you should use Manipur as an example, time. but you use some I, other I good examples. I can give you facts, I can give so you figures. Sir, you use some other good facts and figures. Which it doesn't I think, augur well when you interrupt No, 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 me just a minute, Gaurav Bhatia, we, we have limited okay, time for all our panelists. Do you have the courage to ask him? Yes. No, no, please. Radeep, don't do this. Yeah, please go you ahead. You cannot be a professional Give me the heckler. question you want me to don't ask do him. that. Please. Yes. I want you to ask him that 6,337 rapes and in proportion to the population that Rajasthan has, it is almost six times the number of rapes that happened in Uttar Pradesh. I want to ask you how many times have you seen Sonia Gandhi, Priyanka Vadra Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi speak on that subject second? Dogla Pan kya hota I'll tell you. Himachal Pradesh. They said inflation has to be controlled. But they have increased six rupees VAT on diesel products. In Karnataka they guaranteed free electricity. They have hiked the tariff by three rupees. Is it not correct in Rajasthan? They had made a poll promise that there would be a complete farmer loan waiver. They did not do it. In Chhattisgarh, they said there would be stipend for the youth who are unemployed. Mm -hmm. They have not done it. So this is Dogala yeah, Okay, okay. You let's ask. Let's, let tough Sanjay, Sanjay Jha. And double, then if you okay. get an answer, Sanjay please Jha, let the me truth. Know. Okay, one minute. Sanjay Jha, the truth is, last nine years, Narendra Modi has outscored you in every major election among women voters. He's built a connect. Now, whether you say it's the programs, whether it's the sense of empowerment he's given, we can debate that. But the tr that is the truth. Those are the hard facts. On the other hand, Gaurav Bhatia says in states like Rajasthan, you've got to walk the talk. You've got to have your leaders when Rajasthan has one of the worst records as per the National Crime Records Bureau on atrocities against women. You've got to raise your voice much louder than you do. That's what is said. Uh, Razib, I think both Tara and Sanjay Much were longer. making very valid points, more, I think, relevant for the conversation. Gaurav Bhatia has derailed it. I need to now put him, put his ridiculous arguments in place. I think Mr. Bhatia doesn't know that in, a, no, in no, one of the most horrific gang rapes, please, Rahul please Rahul do not Gandhi interrupt Rahul me, Rahul 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 interrupt you. Please huh? do not interrupt me, Mr. Bhatia. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Sanjay Jha, go ahead, don't worry. In short, huh? in short, members of the Sangh Parivar were actually arrested in a gang rape case in Rajasthan. I think he should get his facts together before he comes on a, on a very well-respected television show. Mm -hmm. Point number two, nobody from the Congress, no leader from the Congress has behaved in the repugnant way you found in the case of Unao, where a BJP leader was involved and the entire institutional apparatus went to protect him. I don't think any Congress leader has done that ever. You know of Katwa, we all know the horrific case of Katwa. We also know in the case of Hathras. I mean, I don't understand how thick-skinned can you be that you come on a program where you're on a slippery slope right. and think that water boundary will take you far. My last point, Razi, before we wrap up, my simple point here is that the BJP has actually misled the women. It has insulted the women of this country by all the examples that we have cited because deep in their hearts, they are the party that treats I think not just the women, mm -hmm. they treat the Dalits, the scheduled tribe, everyone as a vote bank. Okay. Last but not the no, least, no, so they you have made... the courage. Let them support the women's reservation bill. Let them support the women's reservation bill. Well, the bill. fact is men across parties have not supported it. Sanjay Jha, let me tell you that. There the double standards come out. Men across parties in this country have not supported the women's reservation bill. So let's not go to that. But so I want Congress, to ask... Congress brought it. No, no, no. You may have brought it, but you did not pass it. The BJP uh, also has not yet been able to pass it despite a majority in parliament. But a final word from Professor... Just a minute, sir. Professor Sanjay Jha, 
I want to ask you very clearly. One quick what sentence, explains Rajiv. why Narendra Modi has a strong appeal among women and can the Congress, through schemes like what they brought today in Karnataka, actually counter that? Uh, see, whatever announcement has been made by uh, Congress in Karnataka, that can have an impact in Karnataka, but I don't see that such an announcement by Congress party in Karnataka can have an impact across the country. Uh, I don't think that, that announcement has the power to counter Prime Minister Modi's uh, announcement of uh, reducing the gas cylinder prices by 200 rupees. Uh, the other question about why women seems to be tilted in favor of BJP, I think there's a uh, Prime Minister Modi remains very, very popular and it cuts and his popularity cuts across caste, community, gender and, uh, and his popularity is because he's right. seen as a strong leader, he's seen as a person who has the vision, he is seen as a, he, he is seen as a leader who has taken India's image across the world. India's image has improved across the so world. So you're this saying, is the common you're perception. saying his popularity this cuts is the across the gender gap. Has, okay. Points taken. I think Adi, it's, 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 fasc absolutely. it's fascinating to listen Adi. to all of you because I think women are firmly on the radar. That's very clear. Any political party today that wants to actually win elections has to make sure that schemes, as Tara Krishna Swami said, are delivered to the women of the country. They will reward you if you give them schemes that transform their lives. That's the big message that's coming out. I thank all my panelists for joining me on what could be a big talking point ahead of 2024.